All right, guys, so I want to take a couple minutes and show you how I use my laptop and Google Earth to find key areas on a lake prior to going out fishing. Now, when I find these areas, I'm going to put a waypoint on my Google Earth and then convert this file to a usable file for my fish finder. It's a super simple process, and I'm going to walk you through step by step how I do this right now. Okay, so to start off, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download Google Earth Pro to your desktop. So you're going to pull up Google and you're going to type in Google Earth. Pro. You're going to see where it says Earth versions Google Earth and you're going to want to click here. You're going to scroll down to the bottom where it says download Google Earth Pro on desktop. Now you're not going to be able to use a smartphone or a tablet to download this to transfer any kind of uh, GPS coordinates to your fish finders. It has to be done through a desktop or a laptop. So you're going to want to click Google Earth Pro on desktop. Now this is a uh, actual product from Google so you don't have to worry about any kind of viruses or spamware. So you can accept and download. And at the bottom left hand corner you're going to see Google Earth Pro setup. You're going to click here. And basically you're just going to follow all the prompts to download Google Earth to your desktop. Once you download Google Earth to your desktop, you'll click the icon. And you'll pull up Google Earth and it'll look just like this. Now what you'll do is in the upper left hand corner where the search bar is, you'll click here. And type in the desired lake that you're looking for. Now I'm going to use this local lake in my area just because they recently worked on the dam and you can basically see the entire lake bottom when it was dried up. So as you can see you can see everything on the lake because they had drained the lake completely to work on the dam. Now as you can see in the bottom of the screen here imagery date this is from 2016. Now you can kind of play with your desired lake and try to find um, maybe a dry season or um, you know maybe they did maintenance on the dam that you can kind of see a lot of the contouring of the lake and features that are um, in the water. So basically what you'll want to do is you'll come up to the top here where there is a clock where it says show historical imagery and there's an arrow pointing to the left. You'll click here and it'll come up with this timeline. Now for the timeline, it brings up from 1985 to the current date of 2023. So you can see everything in the, um, the picture from 2023 was covered by water. And if you scroll back through 2020, still had water. 2020, still had water. 2019, this is where they were working on the construction of the new dam and it had been drained for quite some time that you can kind of see the grass that was growing up through. You can also even kind of see where some of the harder bottom of the lake would have been at because it didn't grow any grass. Um, but if I keep scrolling back through to find the desired image that I want would be the 2016 when it was completely dried up in the fall. So basically once you find the um, time frame that you're looking for, you're going to come over here to where it says My Places and you're going to right click here. You're going to hit Add Folder and you're going to name this folder the lake name. Hit OK. Now as you can see the folder name will come up. In this case it's Donegal Lake. You want to make sure that all your pathways and your pins and waypoints that you're putting on your map are falling under the correct file name. So I'm going to come up here to add a waypoint or a place mark. Basically click here where the uh, yellow push pin is and you can drag and drop this anywhere on the map that you're looking for. So if you zoom in you can kind of see this must be an old roadbed that crossed over the uh, or underneath the the, uh, the lake years ago. So I'm going to put a place marker here and I'm going to change the place marker name to road. 
I try to keep these place marker names pretty short, seven to eight characters. Um, if you try to go any longer, it usually cuts them off anyway, so I just kind of keep them short. I'll add another one over here, and I'll name this one also. I'll name it Road. I will place a place marker here where it looks like there might have been an old culvert or a bridge or something like that. I'll just name this one Bridge. Now you can also go through and on the upper part here where you saw the pin, it would be the third one where it says Add Path. It's the dots with the, the lines connecting. It'll come up with a white box and you can click and it'll draw a line in between each dot. Now you can change the pathway name. I'm going to just type road bed and save it. Now these pathways, not on every unit um, through Garmin, Lowrance, and Hummingbird will actually pick up the, the pathways. Some accept it, some don't. And um, it's not just brand specific. There's um, certain models in each brand that may or may not do it. You just kind of have to take the long way if it doesn't accept it and just use pins to kind of pin any kind of pathway that you're trying to mark. Um, but for the most part, you're just going to have to play with the pathways. Um, what I do is I'll put the pathway down and I'll also put the pins down. That way, if the pathway doesn't show up, I at least have backup with the pins. Um, so once you kind of pin and pathway anything that you are um, trying to mark on your screen, you're going to come over to your file name and you're going to right click and you're going to go down to save place as now what I do is I go to my desktop and I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to name it KML now what you want to do is change your file type to a KML and hit save. Now that we've saved all these uh, pathways and place markers, we basically now have to transfer the KML file over to a GPX file, which a GPX file is how the um, fish finders read all these marks. So we'll get into that right now. Okay, now that we've downloaded our KML file and we need to convert it to the GPX file, we're going to go back into Google and we're going to search KML to GPX. Now I've not used these links in the past, but if you scroll down to the GPS visualizer, um, this one I have used and it, it seems pretty safe. It doesn't have any kind of spamware or anything connected to it. So we'll click here. You're going to go up to where it says output format and we're going to change this to the GPX file. We're going to choose our file that we just downloaded which is our Donegal Lake and we're going to hit open. You are then going to click here where it says convert and then you're going to click here where it says download. Now once you pull up your downloads, you'll see where your GPX file is downloaded. I like to rename this GPX file to the actual lake name. Alright guys, now that we've downloaded our GPX file that is compatible with our fish finder, our final step is to purchase a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Now it's important to know that it's not compatible with anything larger than a 32 gigabyte. Um, if you get say like a 64 gigabyte, it won't be compatible with your fish finder. So don't get anything larger than a 32 gigabyte. Now I'm going to link all the um, links to the description in the video down below. So you'll be able to find the all the links for the micro SD card, the GPX converter, and the Google Earth. Once you get your micro SD card, all you're going to have to do is drag over your GPX file 
to your micro SD card and drop it into your Garmin folder. From there, all you're going to have to do is insert your micro SD card into your fish finder and upload. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or a comment down below. I'm going to drop a link right here. If you want to subscribe to the channel, all you have to do is click that link and you will follow along on Baron's Angling and find more informational videos just like this on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks again for clicking on the video.